أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another segment of our Ramadan series In this series we are looking at the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with regards to the month of Ramadan or fasting We want to learn from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that we will have successful months of fasting inshallah I am Yunus Hassan I'm a student of Al-Quran. I teach computer studies at a public school and I also run my private computer school where I manage as the executive director. Before we continue with today's discussion, we'd like to look at the previous question that we asked in our last segment. We'll try to look at what the right answer is and see how many of us got it right, inshallah. The question that we asked was, at what age did Jesus Christ first speak. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. At what age did he speak or did he first speak? According to the teachings of Al-Quran, we learn that he spoke at birth. Right at the time he was born, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, spoke. Or Isa, alayhi salam, as he's known according to the Quran. According to the Quran, we learn from Surah Maryam, that is the chapter of Mary, that is chapter 19 of Al-Quran from verse 16 towards verse 35. We learn about the narration that Allah SWT has given with regards to how Jesus Christ was conceived and born. We learn that Allah SWT sent Angel Gabriel to Mary or Maryam, mother of Jesus at that time. The Angel Gabriel came to her and gave her the message that she was to conceive a child. And this child will be a blessed child who will be appointed as a servant of Allah. And that's going to, he's going to be a sign to the whole of mankind. And one special sign here had to do with the fact that he was going to be born without the intervention of a male. So when this message came to Maryam or Mary, she said to the angel that she was not one that was unjust. And how could she give birth to a child when no man had touched her? And the angel Gabriel told her that that is the will of Allah SWT and so will it be. And we learn onwards that she gave birth to this blessed child, which is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And then took him to her people. And the people kind of criticized her that, Oh Mary, we do not know of your parents who were people of honor, who kept their chastity and were very respectable in society. So how could you bring a child to us and you have not had any, uh, we've not known you to be legally married to a man. And that is where she pointed to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him when he was still a baby or in his cradle. And then he spoke that indeed he's a servant of Allah and then peace be upon him the day he was born, the day uh, he will die. And he's going to be one who will be worshipping Allah SWT in terms of his service to the whole of mankind. So we can find this um, story or this narration in Al-Quran, Surah Maryam, chapter 19 of Al-Quran, from verse 16 towards verse 35. Before even verse 16 in that chapter, we learn that Zachariah also was given a message of his son, that is uh, Yahya, John the Baptist, where Zachariah had also called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would need someone who would be an inheritor to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the news of a child that would be born. And he said he was old and his wife was barren. But Allah said indeed, he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever Allah wills, it will happen. So the same chapter from the beginning, chapter 19 of Al-Quran, somewhere from verse 2 onwards, the story of the birth of Yahya or John the Baptist commenced before the story of uh, the birth of Jesus Christ continued from verse 16 onwards to verse 35. And in verse 35, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that indeed he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, kun fa yakun, that is when he intends a matter, he says, be to it and it is. Isha'Allah. That's the brief um, history 
or story with regards to how Jesus Christ's peace be upon him spoke at birth. So indeed, Jesus Christ's peace be upon him first spoke at birth. That was the first time he spoke at the time he was a baby and that was the beginning of his miracles. We also believed in all the other miracles that he did in his lifetime. We believe that he rose the dead, but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he healed the leopards and blind, but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the birth of Jesus Christ was one of the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he was born by a woman without the intervention of a male, inshallah. For today's hadith, we are going to read from Sahih Bukhari, the book of uh, Vitals of the Night of Qadr. We are going to look at hadith number seven. It is narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha that Allah's messenger used to practice it's a calf in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And he used to say, look for the night of Qadr in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. So from this hadith, Aisha radiallahu anha, who was the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is giving us this narration that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said that we should look out for the night of Qadr, that is the night of power in the last 10 days. And she's testifying that he used to practice itikaf. So for today's discussion, we are going to look at what itikaf is. Itikaf simply has to do with seclusion. In this case of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he used to seclude himself in the mosque in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these last 10 days of Ramadan, in order to get the night of power, that is the Laylatul Qadr. We have spoken quite um, a lot on what Laylatul Qadr is in our previous segments. We said that Laylatul Qadr is the night of power that when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this night, it will be better than worshiping him for 83 years and four months, meaning the blessing that we'll get in worshiping him in this night of Laylatul Qadr is so mighty that the worship of him in 83 years and four months will not be equal to worshiping him in this particular night. That is why it is important for us to take it very serious and worship Allah SWT in these last 10 days of Ramadan so that we could get the Laylatul Qadr, which is the night of power, inshallah. So with the remaining la uh, nights in Ramadan, let's not be lazy, let's not be sleeping, let's try as much as possible to be up and worshiping Allah SWT throughout these last nights in Ramadan, inshallah. We will not know the exact night, inshallah. So we let's not see that we are waiting for the exact night to worship Allah so that we we'll get Laylatul Qadr. Here we understand that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is advising us that we should worship Allah subhanahu seriously in the last ten nights because indeed the Laylatul Qadr can be found in the last ten nights. There are some other narrations that have given um, some sort of a clue towards when the Laylatul Qadr is. In other hadiths, we've gotten information that the Laylatul Qadr actually is in the 27th night. There are some hadiths that have been um, given information with regards to the 27th night of Ramadan being the night of Laylatul Qadr. So what that means is that on the 26th day of Ramadan, that evening, the 26th evening, going into 27th, that is indeed the night, as we have been saying that in Islam, the night precedes the day. So in Islam, we look at the night before the day. So when we are looking at the night of the 27th, it means that on the 25th, uh, sorry, on the 26th evening is when we are going to look for the night of the 27th, inshallah. So that's just a brief uh, information with regards to the Laylat al-Qadr. Inshallah. And from this hadith, we learn that the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam used to observe itikaf, that is seclusion in the mosque. So we can also observe seclusion in our own homes. If you are in your home, because of the um, coronavirus and the pandemic that is on, we, are not, we don't go to the mosque again. So you can seclude yourself in your house. Try not to be too busy during the day so that you can have enough rest so that you can wake up in the night and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you are too busy in the day, you will not have that energy at night to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's not be too busy in the day and try to go to bed early enough so that we can rest and wake up at midnight. Or you can even start as early as um, 10 p.m. if you want. But inshallah, somewhere 12 a.m., let's wake up and then worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want around 2 a.m. too, it's good. 
But the most important thing is that let's focus on getting this Laylatul Qadr before the end of Ramadan. Because it's a night that if we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, we'll get the blessing that will be better than worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 83 years and four months. And worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Laylatul Qadr can be as simple as possible. You can recite Quran when you wake up to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do some nawful prayers, do some uh, zikr if you want. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. And so many other zikr that you want to do as part of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In some other hadiths, we've we learned that Aisha radiallahu anha was told by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if she, if she meets Laylatul Qadr, it is best for her to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the popular dua that we've been um, hearing or supplication that we are told has to do with this particular supplication that says, Allahumma inna ka'afuun toibun afafu anna. Allahumma inna ka'afuun toibun afafu anna. Meaning, O oh Allah, you are the one who loves to forgive. And inshallah, O oh Allah, forgive me. So it's more or less seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. So that's just a brief um, information with regards to the Lilat al-Qadr and the Itikaf. So Itikaf, let's try to seclude ourselves at home and not move around so that we could have more energy at night to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us to be up and worshiping him throughout the nights of these last 10 days of Ramadan, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in our endeavors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness in our struggle, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sabr, that is patience and endurance in whatever we do, inshallah. Before we go, we would like to look at the question of the day so that next time when we come, we'll look at what the right answer is. And the question of the day is, who are the Ahlul Bayt? That is the family of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who are the Ahlul Bayt? So we know the Ahlul Bayt refer to the family of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's see how many of us can get this uh, question right in the comment section, inshallah. So who are the Ahlul Bayt? And the Ahlul Bayt are the family of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's see what you can say with regards to the Ahlul Bayt. Inshallah, when we come next time, we'll learn about the Ahlul Bayt, and that is the Prophet Muhammad's family, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa grant us goodness in this world, goodness in the year after, and protection from the fire of Jahannam. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.